After three tours of duty in Iraq and one in Afghanistan, veterans of Fox Company 2nd Battalion 5th Marines, known as Fox 25, thought their wars were over. But their fight has followed them home. More members of their unit have since died from suicide than from combat. As they continue to battle PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorders from their service, former Corporal William Yellowhair was the unit's third and most recent suicide. I'd like to know what we're going, what we're going into, what we're getting into, you know, what kind of operations we're going to be doing. Despite more than a decade of in and outpatient treatment at the VA hospital in Prescott, Arizona, William Yellowhair's body was found in his garage next to his service duffel bag and pictures of his Iraq service. We're now in the outskirts of Baghdad in the industrial area. We lost two of our tanks. We had several of our people wounded. As an embedded reporter with Fox 25 on two of their tours of duty in Iraq and following up with them over the years, Many of them have shared their difficulties with varying degrees of PTSD and the different treatments they've tried with mixed results. I felt extremely is isolated because I, I couldn't relate to anybody. Kane Marzola, highlighted here fighting from a rooftop in Ramadi, Iraq, was first diagnosed with PTSD while still in the Marines. After his discharge, he was treated at his local VA hospital near Las Vegas. When they started getting me on, on the medications, I lost all of that. I lost what made me special, what made me different, what made me stand out amongst my peers. I just was a zombie. I didn't care. I didn't have a fight. No more fight left in me. Frustrated by the traditional PTSD drug and therapy protocols, he created one of his own based on an intense physical training regimen to regain what he calls his fighting spirit. Seeing things out here, um, being part of a war, being part of history, it's, uh, it's impacted us all in different aspects, I think. Definitely, it's changed my life forever. I won't go back to the States the same. After coming home, former Corporal Michael Elliott was initially reluctant to get treated for his PTSD. I hit rock bottom, got a DUI, drinking, uh, quit my job that I had here, a little short-term job. I was just like, this is not me. Something is wrong. I need help. He confessed to driving to the VA hospital in Helena, Montana for nearly a year and sitting in the parking lot before mustering the courage to share his problems with professionals. It's a safe place. It's a place where uh, people are actually here to help you and a lot of the time out in the community or family and things like that. You feel like you, know, you don't want to complain with your story or your issues to people. According to the VA, 10 to 20 percent of recent combat veterans and 15% of Vietnam era veterans are experiencing some degree of PTSD. Together, that accounts for nearly 20% of all VA patients. Most experts agree that psychotherapy is the most effective long-term treatment. The problem is it's not easy or readily accessible to veterans when they need it in their daily lives. Well, some of it has to do with the nature of PTSD, and, and, and that is that people with PTSD try to avoid, you know, memories and uh, things that remind them of, uh, of their experiences. Dr. Thomas Nylon, head of San Francisco VA Hospital's PTSD clinic, understands FOX25 and other veterans' complaints with existing PTSD treatments. Namely, cognitive therapy can take months of emotional sessions discussing their trauma, which could be too difficult and time-consuming to complete. The prescribed antidepressant medications mostly treat PTSD symptoms rather than the underlying problems. These medications have side effects. Sexual side effects is really common, sedation, insomnia, there's a host of them. And yes, the medicines are better than they used to be, but no one's happy with uh, the current status. What are some of the things you're looking at to maybe make the cognitive therapy easier, more accessible? There's been a lot of effort to sort of um, optimize uh, cognitive therapies, to speed them up, to telescope them into a shorter period of time. Well, I'm glad to see you again today. How are you doing this week? The VA is also using teleconferencing to make the therapy more accessible and convenient and developing mobile apps to help vets deal with their PTSD crises wherever they might emerge. Welcome the body. Shift back to that feeling of calm tranquility.
we can recommend some complementary integrative therapies that are known to reduce stress and have some preliminary evidence for PTSD, such as yoga or mindfulness meditation or acupuncture. Dr. Karen Seal, the director of the San Francisco VA's Integrated Care Clinic, believes many of these complementary treatments the VA is now offering can reduce dependence on prescribed drugs. Many veterans are relying on recreational drugs for their symptoms, which the VA can't prescribe, like marijuana. And MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy, which is further along in the clinical trials and more promising for treating the underlying causes of PTSD, according to the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies conducting the research. This is the time for the supplemental dose if you want to take it. You want it? Sure, why not? Okay. Cannabis only works in symptom reduction is, is the hypothesis. Um, and with MDMA, we believe is it can actually cure PTSD with the way it works in the brain and the way that um, the neuroplasticity and the relearning and reconsolidation of the memories. MDMA taken alone is not believed to be a silver bullet cure. Therapy is still required and experts warn against taking MDMA and other psychedelics for PTSD without professional assistance. About a week ago I had a sniper get real close to me. You never know out here, in IEDs, we see, I guess the first couple months we, we saw him every day. Sal Chavez, a former Navy corpsman with Fox 25, has tried several therapy programs, both at the VA and in private practice. He believes his 15 year struggle with PTSD is responsible for his excessive drinking, fighting, divorce, and frequent thoughts of suicide. We're seeing people that end up killing themselves because they never got the treatment or the treatment was ineffective in addressing their needs. Dr. Skip Rizzo, a research psychologist at USC's Institute for Creative Technologies, has been developing virtual reality programs for engaging this generation of PTSD veterans in exposure therapy. The goal isn't that just by going back to the scene of the crime, you're magically gonna get fixed. The goal is, is to activate those emotions and, and reprocess them and to do it repeatedly and in that safe context. With the help of Dr. Todd Adamson, a former VA therapist, Sal Chavez agreed to re-experience a particularly traumatic event we both were involved in during a roadside ambush at Fox 25's final approach to Baghdad when they suffered their first fatalities on April 4, 2003. Everything was on fire, loud, rounds being shut off, main tank gun being shut off, you <clears throat> feel the percussions of all the explosions. So how, how are you feeling in your body right now as you're watching this? Uh, just a little tense. Mm -hmm. I know that this is a virtual world, but I'm like, my habits are doing yep. what I'm supposed to be doing. VR can never be an exact representation, but it's stimulating enough for the vet and the therapist to work together more efficiently and to make the traumatic experiences easier to deal with. So I had to find it within me and, and start making the hard choices of facing myself, finding help, doing whatever I had to do to get healthy again. Oh, Kane Marzola is working with other vets on overcoming their PTSD problems. And Michael Elliott is getting his master's degree in social work to do the same, as the Marines of Fox 25 continue their battles with PTSD. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Mike Surrey reporting from San Francisco.